So I thought I'd share with you an interesting experience that I had the other day involving my spring hair. So I'm a member of this Facebook group and it's for people who keep rodents in a professional setting, people like zookeepers and whatnot, and I'm technically not supposed to be there. But anyway, somebody on the group actually posted an article about spring hairs, which was pretty cool because I rarely see things posted about spring hairs. It was actually about research that has shown that spring hairs kind of actually glow in the dark. So what is meant by this is that they actually exhibit something called biofluorescence. So some animals actually emit visible light. That's what's involved in with animals like fireflies and some of those deep sea fishes that you see that actually have light you can see. And that is called bioluminescence. But biofluorescence is when animals can emit light under certain conditions. And one of those conditions is UV light. So there's a limited number of animals that they know about that can do this. Some are birds and invertebrates, and there's a small number of mammals that they know about that do this, including platypus, opossums, not possums, but opossums, and flying squirrels. But apparently spring hares are the first uh, placental mammals from the old world, that just means Africa, Asia, and Europe, that actually emit biofluorescence in their fur. So in the study, they tested six live spring hares and a couple of taxidermied spring hares. And of course, spring hares are not common animals, so they obviously had a limited sample size, but every single spring hare did exhibit the biofluorescence and I'm going to add a seventh one for them because we actually tested this ourselves. So I thought I'd see if my spring hair actually did this, but I didn't have any of the fancy, more expensive UV lights that the researchers used in the study, but I did have this. This is just a light that people use to see if there is a urine stain on their carpet and they actually don't really work until the urine is already dried and then you can't ever make the stain really go away. I mean, it always shows up. But anyway, this is what I had and I did not think it was going to work, but I did try it and I was pretty surprised with the results. I probably got a little overly excited. But anyway, here's a clip for when I first shine a light on him for the first time. All right, we're going to turn out the lights and see if anything happens. Hopefully something interesting happens. I don't want to start up. Oh, oh, it's working. Yeah, look at this. Oh my God. It looks wow. Oh, wow, I didn't think it would work. Yeah, look at that. It's on his tail and uh, I don't want to shine it in his eyes. Like, hold what, the camera? The, uh, the, the light. You have to not shine it in his face. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because you don't want to hurt his eyes, yeah. Wow. And it's only in certain spots. Yeah, they said it was in patches, but the other ones had more. He has less, so I wonder why. It doesn't look like less. Yes, it's less than I saw in the pictures on the study. Oh, okay. Wow, but look how much I was on his tail right there. Yeah, like. <clears throat> yeah, they said um, that there was more of it where they groomed each other or something. So I'm not really sure. He has less than the others. It's someone's on his head. Yes, I see it. I don't want to shine it in his face, but yeah, it's on his. It's a lot on his head. On his head. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he's a weird animal. Now he's just gonna get ticked off with me. He's got some on his foot. So it works. Scientists were correct. Mm -hmm. So what do they call it? That was on. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to shine in this face too much. All right. So as you can see, he actually does the same exact thing that the spring hairs did in the study. I'm going to put a picture here that shows that the uh, patchiness that you can see is about the same and there's actually a lot of it on his head as well and they're actually not sure why they have the patches where they have them. Yeah, it's on the underside too.
They said that it might coincide with areas that are involved with intraspecific interactions, involved with maybe social behaviors, grooming, and breeding, I think. But it was pretty cool to see that he has the same exact patterning as the spring hairs in the study, although they're all slightly different. So they say that this happens because they have fluorescent porphyrins in the cuticle of their hair, apparently, and it just makes them glow different colors. So my spring hair looks kind of pink, but some they said I think was orange and red, but he kind of just had a pink color under the light that I used. So one of the theories about why this happens is probably the most likely explanation is that it has something to do with camouflage and helping them avoid predators because apparently some of their predators might be sensitive to UV light. So in some way, this probably confuses them and so it just makes them more challenging to catch although it doesn't work on humans obviously but anyway I just thought that was interesting and I rarely get to see any information about spring hairs any uh, new news and discovery so that was pretty cool but anyway that was my interesting experience hope you enjoyed thanks for watching